few cities have changed the world as drastically as Los Alamos, New Mexico. An isolated town where the first atomic weapons were constructed during the Manhattan Project, under direction of Dr. J. Robert Oppenheimer. So I had the opportunity to visit Los Alamos during Barbenheimer Weekend, a historic box office event during which the Oppenheimer biopic, directed by Christopher Nolan, was released. While I was not able to see it in Los Alamos itself, I was able to see it at the Violet Crown Theater at the Santa Fe Rail Yard in Santa Fe, New Mexico, not far from Los Alamos. The film is excellent, I would definitely recommend seeing it. But in this video we are going to see where many of the events portrayed in that movie took place, as well as some filming locations in Los Alamos. After the new scientists and workers, often coming with their families, arrived at the Lemine, New Mexico Railroad Station, they would actually start the final leg of their journey here in the historic state capital city of Santa Fe, at this very building, 109 East Palace. All incoming employees would stop by here to check in, before being shipped off to what was only referred to as the Hill. A woman named Dorothy Scarrett McKibben, the gatekeeper of Los Alamos, would meet all the Project Y workers here, she would write up and issue their identification and security passes, and also arrange the top secret transportation. Everyone from Enrico Fermi to Oppenheimer himself made their first stop here. It is now a gift shop, but at least they have that marker. And now let's head up to the hill. Los Alamos is located about 35 miles northwest of Santa Fe. It was far enough, but not too far from civilization so that they could bring people and supplies. The high elevation Mesa Top location was specifically chosen by Robert Oppenheimer, as he was actually familiar with the land. Since 1928 when he came here to heal from tuberculosis, he leased a ranch near the site of Los Alamos, and really came to enjoy it. The current road up to Los Alamos did not exist when Project Y started. Back in 1943 they had to haul all sorts of heavy machinery and even uranium on a dirt road with lots of switchbacks. You can make out a remainder of that original road right there. Back then it was an over 2 hour journey from Santa Fe. Now it takes about 40 minutes. This is the main gate. Well not really. It is a restroom in the form of a replication of the main gate, which was located a few miles further up the road. However, that is supposedly the authentic sign from the main gate. There is also an original post-war watchtower at the entrance of Los Alamos. We have now entered the heart of the former secret town, and this is Ashley Pond. The land surrounding this pond was the epicenter of Project Y during the Manhattan Project, although none of the original Los Alamos laboratory buildings exist anymore, but they used to be scattered all around this vicinity. The current Los Alamos National Laboratory facilities are located elsewhere. Los Alamos was originally home to the Los Alamos Ranch School, which was established in 1917 by former Rough Rider Ashley Pond Jr., hence the name Ashley Pond. Clever. But by 1943, the government took over this land, and the crucially important technical area, TA-1, was built on Ashley Pond. Now Ashley Pond is a beautiful park. However, some radioactivity may remain in the pond. Also, there is an elephant here for some reason. That is the Ice House Memorial which marks the site of the ranch school's ice house, a little log cabin in which the core of the gadget was assembled in 1945, just before being transported to the Trinity site in southern New Mexico for the historic test. In the early 1950s it was turned into a museum, but sadly in 1957 it got torn down. All that's left is the stone wall from the foundation, it has some historical plaques on it. The Los Alamos National Laboratory is a national historic landmark, here are sculptures of the two men who led Los Alamos and Project Y to success, Dr. J. Robert Oppenheimer and General Leslie R. Groves. They definitely had clashing personalities and roles, but they still managed to work together here in Los Alamos. General Groves, the domineering military man who had overseen the construction of the Pentagon, was tasked with finding the right scientist to lead a project to design and build an atomic bomb in a timely manner to win the war. And he chose Oppenheimer, who was then a professor at Berkeley. 
Now Oppenheimer could also be really difficult to work with. He was an eccentric but genius theoretical physicist. However, he had no administrative experience and had connections to the Communist Party and Communist sympathizers. So he was a controversial pick. Oppenheimer and Grove stand outside the historic Fuller Lodge. This magnificent rustic building was originally intended as the centerpiece of the Los Alamos Ranch School in 1928. It was the dining hall and staff quarters of the school. The lodge was designed by John Ga Meem, an important Santa Fe architect known more so for his Pueblo revival structures, such as the expansion of the La Fonda Hotel in Santa Fe. However, by February of 1943, the U.S. government shut down the ranch school and moved in. The lodge was used to house some of the first scientists brought to Los Alamos. The population would expand dramatically in a brief time, so the lodge quickly ran out of available rooms. Also, the project why workers would have gatherings and social events in this room, which were usually frowned upon by the army. There was a wedding party going on here, so I couldn't get much footage. Several scenes in the 2023 Oppenheimer movie were filmed on location here in Los Alamos. They used the interior as well as the portico of the Fuller Lodge a few times, including the speech by Oppenheimer, played by Killian Murphy in the movie, where he said that mankind may one day curse the name of Los Alamos. Behind the lodge is the Romero Cabin, an original homesteader cabin of the Paarito Plateau built in 1913. It was originally located somewhere else nearby, but the government kicked the Romeros and all the other families around Los Alamos out of their homes in late 1942. It is next to the 1920s fire cache of the ranch school. It housed a cart with a water tank and pump, and was built out of stone from the ancestral Pueblo and ruin right behind it. There is this historic archaeological site right in the middle of Los Alamos. Two or three ancestral Puebloan families lived in this Pueblo, built sometime around 1150 to 1500 CE by Tewa speaking people. Now let's head into the Los Alamos History Museum, located inside the former guest cottage of the Fuller Lodge. Los Alamos was a secret city where hardly anyone besides Groves and Oppenheimer knew everything. Compartmentalization was key. The whole town, which had over 5,000 inhabitants by July of 1945, had one single mailbox. P.O. Box 1663, Santa Fe, New Mexico. And their mail as well as phone calls were heavily censured by security. 80 babies were born at Los Alamos during the project, so they all had that P.O. Box as their address on their birth certificate. Here are the photos used in the security passes of Robert Oppenheimer and his wife Kitty. The Oppenheimers, like all residents, would receive copies of the Los Alamos Daily Bulletin, a secretive newsletter, and this play was created by Blue Corn, a woman who lived at the nearby San Ildefonso Pueblo and worked as the housekeeper of the Oppenheimers during the project. This room has a display on the Los Alamos Ranch School. It was a private boarding school for middle to upper class boys with an emphasis on outdoor skills. Institutions like this were quite popular in the early 20th century, so rich families could send their boys to get toughened up. But in November of 1942, the school and its land was purchased by the U.S. Army, so they rushed their final class through and awarded the diplomas in January of 1943 so that the project could move in. The ranch school was formulated on the Boy Scouts. That is the letter that the ranch school's director received in 1942, announcing the government eviction of the school for military purposes that permanently ended an era and way of life here on the Pajarito Plateau. This is a polychrome picture crafted by the famed San Ildefonso Pueblo potter, Maria Poveca Martinez, commissioned by the ranch school. And this polychrome disc was found embedded in the fireplace. It was also likely made by Martinez. Here is a portrait of General Leslie Groves, who was the director and coordinator of all the Manhattan Project locations across the country. Logistically, it was truly impressive. And here is a bust of Oppenheimer. This is the original gate from the entrance to 109 East Palace Avenue in Santa Fe, where everyone started their trek to the rough conditions on top of the hill. Here are some domestic artifacts from the secret city where no one could tell their friends or family anything.
This is a Manhattan Project Winter Army uniform. It does have a Manhattan Project sash. There is a thick piece of glass from one of the bunkers at the Trinity test site, as well as a marching calculator. Those were used for computations by the women employees. That is a gold teeth cap used by the scientist Al Graves. He had this made to protect his teeth fillings from radiation exposure. There is a souvenir piece of Trinitite from the Trinity test site. A new material that was created in the blast, as the explosion fused the sand on the desert floor into glass. And that is a piece of uranium used in the German nuclear fission program, which the Manhattan Project worked to outpace. That camera took the only color photographs of the Trinity test on July 16th, 1945. There's a little segment of the firing cable of the Trinity test that connected the control bunker to the shot tower and sent the signal to blow up the gadget. Of course, the Trinity test was successful. Then on August 6, 1945, an atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan. Then another one was dropped on Nagasaki three days later. And Japan finally agreed to surrender. In time, about 110,000 people, mostly civilians, were killed by the bombs created right here in Los Alamos. Here are some artifacts related to the atomic bombs. That fountain pen and the aviation glasses were carried aboard the Enola Gay by the tail gunner George Karen when it dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. And that pocket watch was clearly scorched by the blast in Hiroshima. The Hans Betta House is also part of the Los Alamos History Museum. The important scientist Hans Betta and his wife lived in this home throughout Project Y. Dr. Betta was a talented theorist who fled Germany due to anti-Semitic persecution, and Oppenheimer recruited him to head the theoretical division to study critical mass and nuclear efficiency here. This house was already standing as part of the ranch school, so it was definitely one of the nicer dwellings in town. I really like how they have largely maintained the appearance of the living room. Harold Agnew, who would become the third director of the Los Alamos National Laboratory, had a cocktail party and asked the guests to step in ink and then step on this piece of masonite. Enrico Fermi and other prominent scientists in the early 50s have their footprints on here. There is the Nobel Prize of Fred Reynes, who worked at the lab for 15 years starting in 1944 and won the Nobel Prize in 1995 for his discovery of neutrinos here at Los Alamos. This is the desk of Stan Ulam, used by the pioneering mathematician during the Manhattan Project. He was involved in the theoretical division. He made lots of markings on the desk. There he wrote a mathematician does something on a piece of paper, and then lo and behold a big explosion may occur. And that was his slide ruler, which he always had on hand. That is a demilitarized W-80 thermonuclear warhead. These were developed in Los Alamos during the Cold War and deployed in 1982 for cruise missiles. And that is a B-54 Special Atomic Demolition Munition. Basically an atom bomb in a backpack, so that a soldier could just carry it and plop it down anywhere. These were developed in Los Alamos starting in the 1960s. Probably not the most practical method. That is a piece of graphite from the world's first artificial nuclear reactor, the Chicago Pile 1. Housing has always been an issue at Los Alamos. There used to be a points system based on need and salary, a system which was usually complicated and unfair. That is a uniform of the Pierotti's Clown softball team, which put on a rather unique and entertaining ball game from the 50s to the 70s. There are some Trinitite earrings, along with anti-nuclear bumper stickers. Throughout the lab town's history, there have been organizations like the Los Alamos Study Group who oppose nuclear research and development. Here are some artifacts from the Fuller Lodge. Once the Soviet Union successfully created atomic weapons, thanks to information from spies working here at Los Alamos such as Klaus Fuchs, America became obsessed with fallout shelters. And this is the Betta's Restored Kitchen. Next door is the J. Robert Oppenheimer House, the home where the lab director and his family lived from 1943 to 45. This house was also already here from the ranch school. 
However, it was much tighter quarters than the family was used to. Apparently, Kitty did not like it too much here. While it remained a private residence for a long time, it has been acquired by the Los Alamos History Museum, but it's not currently open. They do seem to have plans to fully restore and open the house to the public, so I really hope that happens. Also, the real home was used as the filming location for their home in Oppenheimer. The real living room was used in the scene where they move in, and it looks just as it did in the movie in there. The Oppenheimer and Betta houses are located on Bathtub Row, where the nicest pre-existing houses of Los Alamos were located. Most of these houses did have a bathtub, which was a luxurious amenity here in Los Alamos, where the government housing was built hastily of cheap and minimal materials, and just about everyone had to use communal baths and showers. This civilian women's dormitory is one of the few World War II constructions that survived in Los Alamos. It was one of the four original civilian dormitories, and these actually had a wait list because they were better than most of the other options. And this was the East Cafeteria during the Manhattan Project. It is documented as being the preferred mess hall of Los Alamos, as it had a better variety of food, but there was only seating for 400 people. Los Alamos is part of the Manhattan Project National Historical Park. Here is the Pierrotis Clowns Monuments. The Clowns were established as the nation's only five-man softball team in 1953, by Lou Pierotti, the owner of the local soda fountain in this serious and high security town. During their games, the team would dress up and act like clowns, so that if they ever lost, they could claim they were just fooling around, although they did not actually lose too often. After a 25 year run, they disbanded in 1977. Now we will take a peek inside the Mesa Public Library, which is a really great library designed by Antoine Predoc a world-renowned architect based in Albuquerque. He has designed buildings all over the place, including the Hotel Santa Fe, a New Mexico and Route 66 themed hotel at Disneyland Paris. There's some good artwork here. This carving features the evolution of Los Alamos. Locals can even borrow paintings at the library. I was able to get access into the United Church of Los Alamos, which was dedicated in 1947 after complaints that Los Alamos did not have a church like every other military installation. It is a beautiful church with fantastic stained glass windows. There is the Noah's Ark and Thanksgiving window set. These are the creation windows, a wonderful depiction of the cosmos with rays representing the Trinity. That rose window is awesome. It contains a variety of symbols all around, including a human fetus next to an astronaut. At least one scene of Oppenheimer was filmed inside Graves Hall at the church. Since they're filming in the spring of 2022, it has been a mystery what this room was used for. However, I was able to ascertain from the trailer that the scenes where they are assembling the gadget, more specifically putting the high explosives around the core, were filmed in this room. I can tell based on the floor pattern, so that's neat. Oppenheimer has select showings at the Sala Event Center in Los Alamos. I was not able to get into one of those, so I had to see it in Santa Fe, but I did want to check out the theater, as outside there is a 1947 Plymouth Deluxe four-door sedan, that was used by the new Atomic Energy Commission here in Los Alamos. Apparently this car is usually parked in the garage of the Oppenheimer house. There is a replica of the Fat Man plutonium bomb inside, the one that was detonated over Nagasaki causing 64,000 casualties. Did I mention this was a great film? Because it really is. I'm glad I could be here this weekend. On December 7th, 1962, President John F. Kennedy spoke here at the Sullivan High School football field. It was the first visit of a U.S. president to Los Alamos, and during his speech he commended the town's citizens for their efforts building new atomic bombs and doing other research at the Los Alamos National Laboratory. He was assassinated 11 months later, so this large memorial was built at the football field. I can't get any closer, but that's pretty interesting. 
Richard Swenson, a former Navy SEAL and lab employee who in retirement became a folk artist, created all of these fantastic scrap metal sculptures, usually of animals. His sculptures are scattered all over the residential areas of Los Alamos, especially along Los Pueblos, as he would often give them away to neighbors. These are really creative and fun sculptures. He was a talented artist for sure. So that was Los Alamos, New Mexico, the birthplace of the atomic bomb, which changed the course of history, for better or for worse. Time will tell. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please check out my other content featuring town and attraction tours across America and Europe. I have been to Oak Ridge, Tennessee and have a separate video on that, as well as another one on the Bradbury Science Museum here in Los Alamos, which had a special Oppenheimer exhibit, along with nearby Bandelier National Monument and the Valles Caldera. I want to give a special thanks to those who made this video possible. Additionally, please like this video, share it, and subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks for watching.